Hi, everybody. Welcome to the Lightroom Show. It is a big, big week for us. Adobe just announced earlier this week Lightroom CC. Yeah, it's been great. It's it's awesome. Uh, great changes that they've done to most of this stuff. If you guys want to be up to speed on this, we've also been busy around here. At we've Kelly been very Warren. busy. We want to keep that leadership role in learning Lightroom. So we did a whole bunch of stuff. We have 14 classes. 14 full-length online classes. We have in-depth stuff, we have quick stuff, we have everything, but it's just 14 full-length classes that we just released this week. Right, on top of that, we also have a learning center, Lightroom Learning Center. If you guys wanna see a link to the classes and you wanna see a link to the learning center, just take a look at the post below. You'll get all of the information we brought in there. I think that anybody who's considering Lightroom or even veterans of Lightroom are gonna get something out of this. To that, we didn't necessarily wanna just tell you about those things. No. I'll show you some stuff inside of here. Scott, yeah, we're going to show got? you some stuff. I do want to mention that we also did a webinar this week. We did a okay. live webinar uh, the day of the launch because it's such a big thing for us. You know, we're, we live, eat, and breathe in Lightroom, so it's really, really important. Uh, we also, even though we released 14 classes, we have a whole bunch more that are in development all right now. Mm -hmm. So for those of you who are Kelby One subscribers, go to the Kelby One website, log in, and just dive in. And for those of you who aren't, this is, this is what you've been waiting for. This is it. Um, so let's talk about big features in CC because there's some things we, I, I want to talk about the big, big feature. Right. So biggest feature right now for you, what would it be? Speed. It's got to be speed. Uh, one of the things that Adobe did that's kind of interesting is they, they redid some of the mathematics, some of the architecture of how the develop module handles things. They have basically passed off some of the really heavy math to the graphics processing unit, the GPU, rather than having it, doing it the way it did before. It, it is a tremendous speed bump. Uh, if you're using the adjustment brush or any of those tools, the speed bump is pretty, pretty significant. Okay. Uh, and depending on what kind of files you work on and stuff, you may see either a massive Massive, crazy increase or just a really good increase. I do want to show you before we go any further where to go turn that on to make sure you are using it so when you download your, your copy of CC. Here we go. Let's go under the Lightroom menu, under Preferences. Make sure you click on the Performance tab. Make sure that Use Graphics Processor is turned on. And if you, you should see your graphics card name appear right under it. So it's going to read your graphics card, and that way it's going to use the graphics processor for the develop module stuff. You should see a tremendous difference in speed. But there's something else that we kind of want to talk about. It, and this is beyond features, but I, I think it needs to be discussed, and that is is this the time where if it, yeah, okay, first, Adobe is making a perpetual version, which right. means Let's you get that out first. You can buy Lightroom. It's called Lightroom Six. Six. All right. Uh, you won't hear a lot of talk about it. Uh, it's only sold by Adobe, so you have to go to Adobe's website to buy it, and you can own it. But this is a point where I would. I would ask you to think about if this is the right decision. Now, before it was pretty much clear cut, like I want this or I don't want this, you know. But I think we're kind of at a turning point here because now that this has been released uh, as Lightroom CC, there is a CC version. Mm -hmm. Adobe is going to be releasing updates to that, right? Not to the one you buy, right? So I mean, and it's 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 just clear that six will be. Yeah, that's kind of it. it. I you mean, got six, and whatever else they add to Lightroom, they'll probably add like fixes or things like that. Well, but you're not getting features. They'll do a think. bug fix, I think, right. and they may or may not do camera support. I can't swear, but you will not get any new features. And so what I'm what I'm afraid is going to happen, and I know what's going to happen because I'm going to read it on forums, going to read it on my Facebook page. Someone will have bought the 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 ownership version, the right. Lightroom six. And what's going to happen is they're going to go and then, I don't know how many months, I don't know what Adobe's timeline is, right. but four months down the road, six months down the road, they're going to introduce six or seven new features. And the people that bought it go, it's not fair. We should have those same features right. too. I, I, I've seen it again and again. So what Adobe's big promise of, of uh, CC is that you'll get features as soon as they're available. Enhancements and JDIs and anything else, as soon as they're ready, not having to wait. It's been two years since Lightroom 5. Yeah, it's been a while. So I just want, I want, and I know there's people that say, you know, I don't want to do the subscription thing. The photographer's bundle is 10 bucks a month. And that's the part that I was going to get to. It was just like, you know, I, I, there's been a lot of people who have had a lot of opinions about the subscription model. Yeah. And when it first came out, there was a lot of people that were just like, as photographers, like, what is this? It seems like the cost is We didn't is too have high. a bundle for us. Right. 
I think that Adobe did a very good job at responding to the needs of photographers at $10 a month for both pieces of software. That's like a trip to Starbucks. Yeah, you know, people forget, I'm like, <laughs> people forget that Photoshop by itself, to own it, well, the only way you could get it was $700. Yep. And then Lightroom was $300. Mm -hmm. It was $1,000 for a consumer three years ago to go buy Photoshop and Lightroom. Right. And now it's, it's 10 bucks a month. So the reason I want, to, I want to bring this up is because I, I don't know if Adobe's going to talk about this. Right. I don't think they're going to tell you. You know, they're going to be like, hey, we, you know, the CC version's where it's at. The CC version, by the way, is the only version where you get to use Lightroom Mobile. Right. If you buy Lightroom 6, there's no mobile. There's no, it's not on your phone. It's not going to be on your tablet. None of that stuff. Okay. <laughs> Let's just set that right back up as if nothing happened. <laughs> All right, so that's the deal. I just, I, I kind of thought it, it, it needed to describe it. I don't know where else. And it's not, it's not a question of like a word of warning or any of that kind of stuff. No. It's just you should know this you and you should, should walk into this knowing that CC is going to be the perpetual. We are not updating new features. Or, or, no, CC is going to be the feature version yeah. that's going to continuously get updates. Right. Lightroom 6 is going to be the version that's going to be fixed, and that's it. And imagine, no how, imagine how many updates they could do in two years versus you get no updates with six. And you're, you're, it's money-wise, you're not gonna save a whole bunch because you still have to pay for the upgrade. The upgrade is not free if you were gonna buy the perpetual version. Right, right. So anyway, just I think it's worth talking about. I don't know where else to talk about it, so we're gonna talk about it here. Um, of course, choose whichever one is right for you, but right. at least I think now you have a little more information to go forward moving with this. And if you didn't know about the $10 a month, now you know about the $10 a month thing. Go to the Adobe website, take a look at the link. You need to t consider that thing. It's actually great. All right. Now, hey, what you, you. Wait, yeah, yeah, yeah. can I set him up? Let <laughs> okay, me set him okay, up. okay. So RC is the guy that wrote the book on HDR. He wrote the book called, the it's HDR. called the HDR <laughs> book. Anyway, we are going to give away 10 copies next week of RC's HDR book signed and personalized to you. Um, and, and I think there's no better person to show you the new built-in 32-bit HDR uh, that's built into Lightroom. Yeah, I thought CC this, this was cool. I thought this was a great thing because it's like they started hinting at it and talking about like when you started getting like uh, the support for it in the earlier version. I'm like, oh, that's great. You can see, you can do the TIFFs. I was like, but in a perfect world, I just want to do everything in one spot. Just let me do it in one yeah. spot. Let me do it in one program and then be done with it. And this is something that I think that they delivered on pretty good. So here I have a series of files, right? I'm gonna grab those files and I have a bracket of five. I'm gonna right click right on them and go to edit or go to photo, merge. And I'm gonna merge these photos into HDR. Now, no leaving another program, no going to a third party program. If you're looking for 32 bits, 32 bit glorious means the, photography. The realistic, the real realistic HDR. So not the crazy over the top stuff. This is you want to get that dream of HDR where you have this big tonal range. Exactly. It's 32 bit. You can increase the shadows without having extra noise and stuff. Mm -hmm. So I think that, and now there was a 32 bit workflow if you were willing to go to Photoshop. Exactly. Started the images in Lightroom, go over to Photoshop, combine them with, you'd have to know the secret handshake to get to the 32 bit because it was kind of hidden, then come back. This is not only faster because you don't have to go to another program. It's just faster. That's right. Now, so here we are right here, and you have the option to auto-align. So if you had a misalignment, if you were hand-holding, you can also auto-tone right from this one section here. You know, the auto-tone works well here. It's pretty I good. I actually leave it on all the time. That's pretty good. And then from there, if anything in the subject moved, right? So auto-alignment is if your tripod or your hand moved. Ghosting is if something in the frame moved. So like if this paper rustled or if this string rustled or something in the scene moved. Is it windy when you were shooting in there? Brian? No, it was actually pretty good, <laughs> pretty good. But you have a series of de-ghosting amounts, right? So once you have that set, you would click on merge. Now, what I've done already is I have a collection here or that has a DNG. They turn it into a DNG file. That's the thing that's amazing. Which that I also thought was great. Photoshop didn't even do this. Even when you had to do the old way, when you're done, you still have the properties of a raw image. That's it's right. It's taken five images and you're basically done with the DNG. It's like you've got another raw image to work with at the end, which is amazing. But can I tell you the most surprising thing about this whole HDR workflow? Tell us, Mr. Kelby. It's gonna blow you away. You ready? It works best if you only use two frames. Mm -hmm. If you only use the one that is two stops under and two stops over, don't even use your normal or any of the other ones, 
So if you took five, RC could do the exact same thing even faster and get better results because of the way they designed it by just doing the HDR merge and all with just the darker frame, the darkest frame, and the brightest frame. Two stops under, two stops over, forget all the rest. It's faster and it actually does. Now, I, I've read the engineers explaining why it's better. It's, it's just better. Me. It's just, it's, uh, they said, well, and they, they explained it. I, I just. But look at this amount of tone. Awesome. Look at, look, I mean, look at the, look, there is like. Yeah, dude, you, no... can, you can go 10 now, stops in either direction. This is the part that I dig, like right here. If you look at this, I mean, that is the amount of detail that you could pull in with all of this. And increasing the shadows with that with much less noise. Absolutely. I think this part is, I'll say it, this is game changing. Yeah. And in the world of realistic HDR, this is game changing. You got a raw image and you can tone it right there and all. This is going to be a long episode if we don't get going. All right. All right. Anyway, I'm happy about this. <laughs> this pleases me very much. I know. Much. This is pretty cool. Hey, I want to show you Panos. Uh, they have built in panos now. So you know what's interesting? Look at look at how Lightroom is developing. How many times we used to have to go to Photoshop. I would tell people, you know what I have to go to Photoshop for? For panos? I have to go there for HDR, you know? I used to have to go there a lot for retouching, and I actually did a whole class on portrait retouching in Lightroom. The entire mm -hmm. class is just how to do portrait retouching. So I'm having to go to Photoshop less and less and less. I mean, there's still times you have to go, thank, thankfully, because so that's why I wrote a book. But every day there's more and more you can do. Let's look at panos. So let me go ahead and grab a uh, collection with some panos in it. Oh, I happen to have some right here. So uh, I've got uh, about uh, how many images? One, two, three, 12 images. Select all, go up under the photo menu, go to photo merge, and right below HDR where, where RC was, we're just going to charge choose panorama. What I love about this is the speed. It creates a panorama preview because in Photoshop, not only did you have to leave Lightroom, but you had to build and wait for the entire pr thing to go. With, with 12 high resolution images taken with a 24 megapixel camera, 18 megapixel camera, you could wait five minutes, six minutes. Now you're waiting about 15 seconds, 20 seconds. Look, it's almost done. That's, and and I mean, you get a preview. And, That's and, and, 12 high resolution images Boom, and it's it's done. And that's the thing. If you haven't worked on the panel thing before, it's one of those kind of like you set it, you go out, go you get a cup a drink, of coffee, you go to Starbucks, <laughs> and all. But now, the another thing that's nice here, uh, it has this thing called auto select projection. So I leave that on all the time. I want it to automatically choose what it thinks is the best method. I don't want to try. Well, should it be cylindrical? What about perspective? Spear, just pick it for me. But you know what else I love? I love this next one, auto crop. You click on it, and it crops away everything else that's not, you know. That's I didn't awesome. shoot this panel particularly right. You notice I shot them wide. I should have shot them tall. You get a little less perspective distortion if you shoot in tall for panos than wide. I wasn't really paying attention. I was like, big buildings. I was so distracted <laughs> with all that. OK, now, so understand what you're seeing now, and this is why it's so smart, is a preview. This is not the final pano. But you can see, OK, this is what I'm going to get. And the window is resizable. So if it shows up really, really small, just drag it out to where it's nice and large. When you're done, hit Merge. This one is going to take longer. But you know what? This is something I used to actually teach uh, on the road in my classes was how to, I would literally, I think I even showed it here in the Lightroom show, how to take a bunch of high res images, save them as low, export them as low res JPEGs, re-import them into Lightroom or into Photoshop, do a preview and see if you wanted to keep it or not. Mm -hmm. Now, in just seconds, you know whether it's worth hitting the merge button. And it's gonna take a few minutes to put these 12 together. But, um, and I'm not gonna make you wait for that. But you know what? It's happening in the background. I can go and work Absolutely. with on whatever I want. Now, here's the thing. Here's, uh, because we were talking about the two previews and all that stuff, so I'm gonna go back to this one example that we were doing here. So we have all of those shots, right? Yep. This, I'm just going to pull this off of the collection right here. Now, these were the files that we were working on. So right. when you're shooting with a camera and it's doing a bracket, right? So this was my metered exposure right, that I was working with. Right, did normal one, exposure. Then one stop under, oh, two, two stops, stops under, one stop under, one stop over, two stops over. So what you were saying was you don't need any of these guys nope. here or nope. here. Or the middle. So reject, reject. Reject. I just need those two. You just want one and two. You would take those two files, right click on that, go to photo merge, go to HDR, do the exact same thing. While you were doing that, I actually processed another one that's like it. So we'll take this, we'll take this one, 
And from here, we're just going to do a little bit of a comparison. I gotta be honest with you. No difference! Yeah, yeah it's on the money. I was like, that's actually pretty cool. You're actually supposed to get better results from two than you will from three, four, five, seven, nine. So anyway, it is gonna definitely change things. Uh, hey, we need to take a short break because we've gone, we're actually over the entire time of, of, the, uh, of the show. So, uh, well, luckily we cover all this stuff. I do, I'm gonna talk you through some Lightroom Mobile stuff when we get back, right. but uh, I do want to uh, make sure that you go uh, and check out Kelby One. This is where we're, we're fo this is our job, is where we focus our, our Lightroom training, right. and we've just got a ton of it, 14 brand new online classes. Go to Kelby One, just take a look at it, and uh, we're gonna take a short break. When we come back, we're gonna talk a little bit about some changes they made to Lightroom Mobile. Stick around, you're here on the Lightroom Show. Hi everybody, Scott Kelby here. I'm very excited to announce Lightroom CC for digital photographers, also for Lightroom 6 users. Lightroom's evolved the way I use Lightroom has evolved and I want to pass that on to you guys. Any Lightroom book's gonna have all the new features, so I've done a lot of work on reworking, rethinking, trying to make it the very best book it can be. Of course, there's lots of free presets you get with the book. You get my workflow from start to finish. Got a whole brand new chapter on Lightroom for your mobile devices. Packed it full of so much stuff, I can't wait for you guys to check it out. Find it wherever really cool Lightroom books are sold. Welcome back everybody, RC here with the Lightroom Show with Mr. Scott Cubby. Scott, what else on the Lightroom CC has got you excited? Uh, Lightroom Mobile. Uh, it, well, it's not really called Lightroom Mobile anymore. I think really they're just calling it, it's just Lightroom, right? You have. Lightroom on your tablet, you've got Lightroom on your desktop, it's just Lightroom anymore. So um, I did a whole class on this. I did okay. an entire class going into depth of it. So what I'm gonna do today is I just wanna let you know some of the things that are in there, because there are some big developments. Big news is for Android users, there's a tablet version available now, so it's not just on your phone. You got the tablet version, I know the Android users have been waiting for that, and uh, that's really big, and that's very exciting, so that's important stuff. All right, also, I just wanna go through some of the stuff that's there. Um, on uh, the mobile version of Lightroom for iOS. Uh, there is a new feature, it's an auto straightening for cropping so that you can just kind of use a one touch adjustment. Uh, they've also improved the crop interface, it's much better. Um, you can, um, they've improved some of the icons to make it uh, more obvious what's going on and easier to identify different adjustments. And also, uh, if you have somebody that you want to turn on to Lightroom Mobile and things, that they're, maybe they're not a, a member, they can actually get a 30 day trial directly from the app on iOS, oh, that's pretty cool. so they can just like get it, so we can, you can get somebody new on board uh, right there, and there's also now uh, support for TIFF files. Okay, so if you're right. doing larger files, yep, that's so good. that's good. Uh, on the Android, of course, the tabloid, uh, the tablet support, not tabloid, the tablet support is big. It's now available on Google Play Store for ARM best based Android tablets. Um, there is SD support. Now, it's not just SD support. There are certain cameras that have an SD card. A Lightroom was not able to see those in the past, but okay. now there is. And there's also DNG support, so users can now import images captured on a DNG-capable Android device and edit them from Lightroom Mobile. Moving those images across a 4G network might be a little different, but anyway, just wanted to let you know, those are some of the basic things. Of course, I have an entire class on it uh, from beginning and I hope you'll go watch that on Kelby One on Lightroom on your mobile device. Yep, now for those uh, DNG versions, just make sure that Android users are using the Lollipop version of Android so that the cameras that you're shooting are shooting inside of RAW support, then you'll be able to use that inside of Lightroom. Uh, here's one feature that I thought was really cool. Just a quick tip while we're working on this. All right, so I'm inside a Lightroom and I wanna import some pictures in here. This I thought was a great feature. I'm gonna grab this and I'm gonna drag it into the library. Now, this will also mimic the same behavior if you were doing this importing from a camera. Right. Right, so you have a series of pictures that are here. Right, you would see copy or copy is DNG. This is all exactly the same. It's this part right here that I'm excited about. Add, add to, to collection. collection on import. So right off the bat, you can just click on add. You can create a collection right from here. So I can go school images. I can put it inside of a collection set if I wanted to. I so they've made this. it very cool. This now, is wonderful. You can set that up there. You click on import. Not only does it import it, but it actually sets it up as a collection. All right, can I give one more thing? Sure. All right, because you're talking about collections. They fixed <laughs> one of my pet peeves in Lightroom, and that is when you used to, in Lightroom 5 and previous, all the way to Lightroom 1, when you created a collection set, 
Okay. You would say new collection set, and it would take you, it would create a new collection set, and then it would give you a gray, empty screen. And you're like, now what? You would have to know, number one, how to get back to your previous import, which if you know, it's not a big problem, but you did have to go, all right, let me go to the catalog panel or go to the film strip, pop up and choose previous. Now when you create a collection set, it just creates a collection set. It leaves you right where you were. Right. So it saves you that whole extra step of trying to get back to where you were. It doesn't punish you for creating a collection set. There's a lot set. of confusion. If you yeah. can see a great screen. Yeah, especially for new users. Imagine if you're brand new to Lightroom, you, cl you click new collection set, you haven't put anything in it yet, it's just like an empty folder, but it takes you to a gray screen and you're like, uh-oh, oh, I've done something wrong, I broke Lightroom. So uh, anyway, I was glad to see they, they added that. It was, I, I, the little things that they add there really make a big difference and there's plenty of them and we cover all that stuff on the Learning there Center are. and the classes. And Can I use this moment to kind of give mine where it was like, a room for improvement. Oh, yeah, this next one, this is kind of sad. Ah, oh, they got so, so close. close. Oh, so close, yes. guys. Here, let me show you. So I'm inside of the collections, and right here, I have a collection. And I do this all the time, right? So I have a shoot, and by default, I create a collection set, and inside of it, I put a series of collections. I, have, I do something very similar to that. Right, so you just have it, you're all shots, and then you, I move everything around like that. I think it makes it easy. And I hate the fact that every single time I do a new shoot, I have to create a new collection, and then set, and then four create collections four collections. Inside it. So I'm like, wouldn't it be nice if they could just duplicate that, just have a standard template, yeah. have the ability to right click, and Look, oh, look, it's duplicate. there. It's duplicate collection set. You can what? do it. This is crazy. This is awesome until you do it. You click it, it created it. With nothing inside. It didn't actually create, it didn't actually duplicate the entire set. It just Duplicated. did the folder on top. It ignored everything inside. Now, so close. Okay, but they did at least let you duplicate a collection. Go to an individual collection, just right. an individual one. So inside of here. Right. Oh, well, let's let's get one that has stuff in it, right? Yeah, all right. Right there. And so if you duplicate it, it does duplicate it with the stuff inside. Right. But when you go to a collection set, it lets you duplicate it, but it doesn't do the stuff inside. It's not consistent. It's not right. Yeah, anyway. So, so close. And you know what? They could have actually added, they could have said duplicate collection set, duplicate collection set, and put a plus sign or something to say, Include. With, yeah, include, you know, include like a plus sign or something or duplicate set contents or whatever. Because that would have been nice. That would have been a big time saver. Adobe, you were so close. Right there. So, and so then, close. Mm. But anyway, uh, all in all, I think everything, that's a nitpicky thing. Yeah, it is a nitpicky For thing. the most part. We'll trade it for the speed. <laughs> oh, yeah. Absolutely, absolutely. Speed kills. Anyway. Hey, oh, hey, I just want to mention real quickly, I'm going to be in London. London, England. Going to be in London with my tour. I'm teaching a class there called my, it's my new seven point system for Lightroom. So I'm teaching a, a seven point system that is completely just about Lightroom. Um, and I hope you'll get to join me there. It is July 14th. Nice. So this summer I'll be in swinging London, baby. I hope you'll come out and check it out. Uh, we'll be in Westminster at the, I think the Westminster Conference Center. Same place I was last year. Um, I'm doing a tour, it's called a Shoot Like a Pro Reloaded. Mm -hmm. So it's an all new tour from what I did last time. So last mm -hmm. year I was in London, had a great seminar, great people, just a ball. And then uh, this is an all new tour. And so if you went to the first tour, whoo, it was custom made for you. If you didn't go to the first tour, you can still come, it'll still be awesome. That'll be great. Now, we always wanna leave you with some inspiration. That inspiration today is gonna come to Eric Kim Photography. It's gonna come from Eric Kim Photography. Eric Kim is a great international street photographer. He's got a wonderful blog that talks about a lot of interesting things. Make sure you take a look at it over at erickimphotography.com. Well, guys, that wraps up the longest show by a long shot that we've ever done here. I believe this is like episode 9 or 10, I think. Uh, but worth it. No, this it. could be episode 11. It's but, a lot of episodes. But worth it. Worth it. It's a release. This is a release. We it's had to go a little extra it. longer. But we thank you guys for being patient and hanging out with us. Of course, hope you'll keep coming to LightroomKillerTips.com. We're going to be talking about this stuff all the time, uh, every day. Myself, RC, and Pete, and some guests. And we'll see you guys next week, next Friday, right here on The Lightroom Show. Take care. See you.